I just uh, share. Yeah, so welcome to Foxy ICOG Sankalp webinar for family planning. And uh, I am really grateful to the President Foxy, Dr. Rishikesh Pai, the Secretary General, Dr. Madhuri Patel, and very, very importantly, Dr. Lakshmi Shrikande, the chairperson of ICOG, for giving us this opportunity to conduct focused programs on family planning, contraception, and reproductive choices every month on the second Wednesday or Thursday. That is how it goes for us. So, so far we have conducted few very interesting programs and today we bring you newer paradigms for family planning. It is like an awakening call given to every gynecologist across the country that look here, there is a new basket of choice. Please include these methods into your contraceptive basket and definitely increasing the choice means increasing uptake. So that is something which we have understood over the years. Thank you, Dr. Parag Biniwale also for being here. And I'm really missing the presence of Dr. Pai, Dr. Patel and Dr. Ashok Kumar. Many times I have requested him. I hope he also comes. So um, thanks to the faculty, all of them who have joined. Uh, I shall proceed to this. Um, I welcome Dr. Lakshmi Shrikande, the chairperson ICOG to this dais. And um, we know that she has been doing phenomenal work for ICOG. I think more and more people are connecting every day with the Indian College because of her zealous efforts, because of her vision. Uh, she has worked for the Journal of Ops and Gynae of India as national corresponding editor also. And she also holds key position in, in the Association of Medical Women India. I think that is called AMWI. She's the founder, patron and president of ISOPAP with her chapter. That also is a very, uh, uh, I think it has got a lot of potential, the ISOPAP chapter. Uh, she has been uh, active in the Indian Menopause Society as well and uh, awarded with several significant accolades, the Nagpur Ratan Award, Bharat Excellence Award, Mehru Dhara Hansotia for Breast Committee, Best Committee Work, it's, uh, of course, when she headed the HIV AIDS Committee in 2007 to 2009. So a real Foxy stalwart, uh, I welcome you, Dr. Lakshmi, to say a few words on the focus topics that we are discussing today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Shobha, for your kind uh, words and introduction. Friends, very good evening to one and all. And I'm so happy that we are back again with Foxy ICOG webinar on family planning. And this time, Dr. Shobha Budi has chosen two very, very important topics. The first one is implant and second one is the latest things which have been added in the basket. She wants to discuss with you all. So I'm so happy with the choice of topics and the choice of speakers. And I take this opportunity to welcome she also uh, as a convener and speaker, then Dr. Tripti Nagaria, and experts are, I am so happy that Professor Ratnamala Desai has logged in. She's been a principal SDM college, Dharwad. Then uh, Dr. Sunita Singhal has logged in, who is country lead for clinical services and training family planning, Zapaigo. So I welcome you both. And I also welcome Dr. Bharti Maheshwari, Dr. Ashish Kade, and Dr. Seema Hakim. So it's a very good uh, platform to discuss the newer contraceptives, including the implant. So welcome all and happy learning. I'm handing over back to Dr. Shobha for further proceedings. Thank you so much, Dr. Lakshmi. And uh, it is your words of encouragement which inspires us to bring more and more new thoughts into our program every month. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, let me go ahead and introduce the experts um, today. So uh, it is with pride and privilege that I introduce uh, Professor Ratnamala M. Desai because, because she belongs to the same state as me. Madam has uh, had a lot of work under her belt, Principal SDM College of Medical Sciences, Dharwad, Professor OBGYN, at SDM College before that. And of course, for many years, she served in the premier institute of Hubli Kims 
as a very senior professor there, president of PAI now, actually, Darwad branch earlier, but now she is the national president and family planning association of India and the country coordinator for Geneva Foundation as well. And at present, she is the master trainer, the national master trainer for implant insertion. And she has trained already a number of doctors in the government sector. It is also my honor to introduce Dr. Sunita Singhal, a figure with whom everyone knows that she is so closely associated with uh, family planning work of the government. Uh, in addition to that, uh, now she is also representing Japaigo as country lead for clinical services and for training family planning. She is actually a gynecologist and obstetrician and has served at Sadarjang Hospital in a key position in MOHFW linked to um, the department, the government of India, national technical resource group core expert and National Master Trainer for Family Planning in all the RM and, uh, and, and CAH programs. I think she's contributed a lot to the success of this national program. Advisor IGNO as well. And her special interest, of course, is public health, which is such a complex, dense service, uh, uh, such a difficult field to achieve anything tangible. So we are very happy today that you are with us and also for quality in maternal health, adolescent health and environment. So I welcome both the experts here. And um, I think before I start my talk, um, whether they would like to uh, share a few words because their, their inputs on the, um, on the device and on the program will come immediately as soon as I finish my brief lecture. But, um, I think I will just open the mic for them one by one. So Dr. Desai, please, would you like to say any encouraging words for Foxy and ICOG? Thank you very much, Shobha. As you know, I am part of Foxy and part of ICOG as well, but currently holding the post of the president of FPI. And I'm very proud to say that FPI is a leader in uh, implants in India. And I also want to share that our concentration all these days has been on sterilization, sterilization, whether it's tubectomy or lab sterilization. And we know that sterilization has got its own complications. And all of us have burnt our fingers. I don't say anybody has had an, anybody is an exception who has not encountered a tubectomy or a lab sterilization complication. All of us have had complications. So it is time to slowly move away from sterilization and move away towards long acting reversible contraceptives. And one of them is the new um, implant. So I think uh, all of us, the FOXI members, the government doctors, the private practitioners, the other healthcare professionals, all of us should slowly move away from sterilization and concentrate more and more on long acting reversible contraceptive like the copper tea which is there for 10 years the lng ius which is now recommended for seven years and of course the implant which is there for three years i'm not saying we should be using only implants but there are other long acting reversible as well and we could be using all these long acting reversible contraceptives and save our women's lives and give them a better choice Thank you so much. And um, more to say after you speak. And uh, Madam Singhal also. Dr. Singhal. Yes, thank you, Shobha. And thank you once again, Dr. Lakshmi. And I do see Dr. Ashish Kale is also joined. So uh, yes, Shobha took the program Family Welfare Forward. And now Dr. Ashish Kale is also doing a lot of work. So together, I think we will join hands and we will make this addition of newer contraceptives, and I say both implants and the sub-Q uh, to a newer heights. Uh, all that I want to add to what Dr. Ratan Mala said, there is genuinely what we have observed, lots of uh, you know gaps in knowledge, myths, not only in the community, but also amongst our own medical fraternity, primarily. Because uh, family planning for the gynecologist takes a rather back seat. You know, uh, we take it that it is for still, you know, the myth is that it is for population control or something. But the government's programs have, if you keep them at the forefront, you will realize that it is ultimately meant to achieve 
a reduction in maternal morbidity mortality as well as neonatal morbidity mortality coming to larks it's a relatively new term especially for india and earlier on I in the government's basket is that her connection earlier on the basket of choice only had iucd and you know the myths prevalent about iucd so now uh, this makes the choice of larks for the postpartum period complete that is the ipp iucd implants which can be inserted immediately after delivery you know and the advantage over pp iucd is that you can there is no time limit like you have for pp iucd that it should be inserted within 48 hours it can be inserted any time after the post so every woman who gets discharged from the hospital after delivery can be offered implant if she is willing so this is something uh, a good thing and for the private providers you know foxy has both combination of government people as well as from the public sector so here i mean on this platform as shobha suggested how to rope in the private providers so i think this is something we will discuss and maybe you know uh, develop a road map of how to train all our private providers uh you know into adopting family this uh, implants in the in their own offers that they make to their clients so rest of it later after shobha so we, because i happen carrying you know i'm if i'm if it can be seen i have plants just to show to the people <laughs> wonderful that is so <laughs> that is so practical sunita ji <laughs> yeah and so oh, yeah lovely. so these things are always in my purse <laughs> <laughs> that is sunita for you ladies and gentlemen <laughs> always practical <laughs> so uh, uh, dr lakshmi it is our good fortune today that i think sunawala sir has joined us yes yes and uh, would you like to welcome sir and sir can unmute and uh, so sir doesn't start the video uh, shobha uh, okay 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 uh, sir, sir uh, yeah sir sir, sir uh, could you dr sunawala can you hear us sir sir if you could speak a few words for us then i will start my lecture sir so, so please proceed now yeah okay so good to see you here ashish i was missing you actually very nice yeah, thank you madam you could pull yourself away from your patients and you are here so very nice bharti so i will share the screen and i'll go ahead with a very brief presentation and if sir decides to join us later then probably just a minute i have to go back and open my presentation sorry about that okay um so now la sir can you yes. hear us no वेलकम सर वेलकम शोभा स्क्रीन बंद करो एक मिनट हाँ हाँ कर रहे हैं या सर प्लीज यू वुड लाइक टू से समथिंग या यस दिस पापुलेशन स्टेबिलाइजेशन इज द मोस्ट इम्पोर्टेंट थिंग फॉर द वर्ल्ड टू सरवाइव मोस्ट इम्पोर्टेंट एंड समटाइम्स इट सरप्राइजिंग इवन नाउ दिस द पॉलिटिशियंस आर टॉकिंग दैट वी मस्ट इंक्रीज द पापुलेश which is something unimaginable and we all are now aware the food the education the medical care and jobs are impossible for a large number of people the second thing i notice in the yesterday years all the males are talking about are you de and plant and everything today there are more females on the panel then the male which is the right thing because it is a genuine yes, problem of the female i'm very happy to see fpi taking part because fpi was one of the pioneers right from 1949 that contraception and family size control is a must and compared to sir you got muted सर तुम अनम्यूट कर लीजिए सर
Hello, sir. I think shall I start yeah, yeah. because yes. Yeah. Make start कर लेते हैं. Think that is better. Yeah. So very very quickly, let me bring into perspective the the positioning of uh, the contraceptive implant. Sir, आप बात करेंगे, sir? Um, no, there's not much. So yeah, please. Really. That we have to educate the politicians as well, and make yes. it a people's program. Yes. That we don't have to go after them and offer them big yes. gifts and all to follow a small family norm. A small family norm is for the benefit of that individual couple directly and indirectly. It is a benefit. to our country so this is the message i would like to say and thank please, you so much and already mentioned by one of the speakers if you go for collection for the blind or for the animals or for the other issues people are willing to give but when you mention family planning people are very reluctant to help so um, and that's why population control or birth control word is be out definitely family planning also has be out and population stabilization would be the right word that we should use more so nowadays i wish this um, say uh, get together a great success and thank you for thank giving you, me the opportunity to talk thank you sir thank, thank you sir thank, thank you so thank much you. Thank, thank you so much sir you you have really made our day by being here and uh, we are hugely inspired by your work sir thank you so I've, much i've been attending all the icog conference yeah i know <laughs> <laughs> nice to see your name but your video is every time off so <laughs> today i think today the sankalp webinar is very fortunate yes <laughs> thank you lakshmi so no, i will family. proceed sir yeah contraception and family planning comes from my heart yes correct whenever there is anything connected with it there is a automatic urge to must attend must participate Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank, thank you, sir. And I must thank Parag because he was the one who alerted me that sir is there. But I am not seeing Parag right now. I think he has left for his exam. So thank you, Parag. I think this will get recorded that I have indeed thanked you for alerting me. But I shall proceed now uh, with a very brief kind of uh, message on the. um positioning of implant today and how essential it is and we all ha should have at the forefront of our minds that unintended pregnancies for our women uh, is indeed a very very serious problem and we must look towards reduction of that with, by expanding the basket of choice so this lecture is about the impact of unintended pregnancies the value of lark methods the etonogestrel implant clinical data perhaps so far but not so much because we are at the threshold of creating our own data so maybe that will not be very relevant but i just want to bring home the fact to you that about 85 million unintended pregnancies happen every year and india has a good share of it if you can focus on the asia one you can see that there are no more than 45 million unintended pregnancies and more than half of that results in abortion and what a reproductive wastage that is and all of that can be prevented so this is another slide which shows that nearly one in five women use contraception inconsistently and that is the reason why we have a high number of of uh, unintended pregnancies and this pie chart shows the total number of unintended pregnancies by consistency of method of course 50% and more is because of non use but the remain 50% who do use very few of them use it well and that there comes the importance of lark because lark is free or independent of user compliance by and large 
This is a slide on which I do not wish to spend much time, only to say that we have an unintended pregnancy rate more or less of 70 per thousand women years. And in order to achieve population stabilization, this should reduce by more than half. And a good number of it is, is consistent of, of abortion and some part of this, the same data is presented in a separate way. And uh, the total number of pregnancies are 48 million in India, one of the data which has given. And you can see that the blue 43%, nearly 26 to 27 million is planned births. That is a child which is welcome in the family is coming at the right time and therefore does well compared to those which are unintended births and the remaining which end in miscarriages and a substantial number of these UIPs, as we call them, end up in abortion. We have spoken about this enough only to say a little more that this will have adverse health outcome, both on the mother and the child. They are less likely to have good care and um, uh, there is likely to increase in morbidity of the mother and child, uh, likely to be fallout of lactation, likely that there will be you know, negative impact on the infant and the child growth. This is a chart which all of us should have and should nurture this chart in your OPD every time, all the time. Uh, try to keep it in an accessible place, very well visible, perhaps under the glass top table uh, on, on the top of your consultation table with the arrow pointing away from the woman. So immediately she is able to see what all are available and she's able to see the most effective, the tip of the arrow are the LARP methods along with the sterilization. And sometimes we feel that LARP methods are even more effective than sterilization. This is saying that in women who undertake abortion, MTP, because their pregnancy is ill-timed, if they are provided with the LARP service, and then they are less likely to come back for a repeat MTP. They're more likely to come back for a planned birth. The immediate insertion of LARP therefore lowers the repeat abortion. And the typical use rates show that LARP fares better than the short acting methods. And you can see the percentage failure rate with typical use of the pills, patch and rings, which are injectables, et cetera, as compared to these devices and the implant. And when we counsel women for sterilization failure, we say probably one in 200. So your risk of failure of sterilization is 0.5%. But can you see that the implant is you know, even lower, 10 times lower risk of pregnancy, 0.05%. So this is the most effective method. Let us look at it like that and least kind of affected by non-compliance because it is LARC. And to introduce the device, more will be said over the next few minutes, but this contains etonogestrel. And etonogestrel, currently this is the one device which needs to be used as an implant and the earlier versions will not be available. Only this will be available. Etonogestrel is a synthetic derivative of the very well-known progesterone desogestrel, and it's already available in majority of the countries in the world. And it is a very, very popular method all across the world, it's, uh, especially in the younger uh, population, the younger girls. And uh, I have spoken already about its efficacy and it is lasting for three years. It's quite well tolerated, has got its own dedicated applicator, which is preloaded. It's like a match stick, that's the analogy, uh, four centimeter and two millimeter. That is how it goes. And this is how it looks. It contains radio opaque barium sulfate as well. So it can be picked up by any of the imaging devices. And uh, of course, there's a rate controlling membrane, etc. So 68 milligram of etonogestrel uh, in the device protects the woman for three years by effectively inhibiting ovulation. So it is uh, uh, no insertion in well-trained hands, a, a minute or so, and removal two minutes or so. Outpatient procedure, not much uh, equipment is required. Clinical trials, post-marketing surveys give a very wonderful pearl index for this method and very good adherence rates. So without going into the details, uh, this is to the scientific mind of the practitioner very, very important. 
that uh, on, uh, what is the therapeutic uh, you know levels of the uh, the drug achieved so you can see that up to 150 also will inhibit ovulation and that is what goes on into the third year initially higher levels are there but what is more important to understand that maximum concentrations are reached within 24 hours and uh, you know 3 4 days and therefore it is almost an immediately effective um, uh, method of contraception just like the intrauterine device uh, then once we remove it comes down quite well and the woman is fertile in no time so this provides reliable efficacy one insertion healthcare professional once in, once in three years trained person has to do it no self administration is required efficacy is not dependent on the user for dosing at the end of third year must be removed and replaced with a new implant and incidentally let me tell you it can be done in the same track if a good site has been already chosen uh, this is about estradiol levels right estradiol levels so what is happening to the estrogens in the body when uh, ovulation is being consistently inhibited for so many months so is the woman at any risk for bone weakening just like we we look at other progestins and we get worried that a woman taking DMPA will develop problems. So here it was seen that, um, you know, it does not re really greatly impact the estradiol levels. And it looks like uh, it is similar to non-hormonal IUDs like copper IUCDs when it is compared. So the blue one incidentally is the implant and the green one is the copper IUD. So uh, it is not very different rapid return to normal cycles as well and fertility as well okay so uh, ovulation has been observed two weeks after removal then the other question which plagues the mind of the provider what to counsel for adverse events and how to manage adverse events fortunately adverse events are seen in very few women maybe five to ten percent of of the whole but one thing to understand about progestin-only methods is though they are very effective, very efficient as contraceptives, they do have the nature of causing troublesome menstrual bleeding, uh, which uh, with good counseling, the woman learns to adjust. Most of the adverse effects listed are not due to the, due to the drug per se, but were found incidentally during the uh, study, except for the irregular bleeding. One beneficial side effect is the significant relief of dysmenorrhea in women who were earlier, earlier uh, suffering from it. So if briefly, if we can say what is the discontinuation rate by women within three years because of the adverse effects. So uh, when they pulled the total discontinuation, which also is, you know, um, not that great. Most studies have shown discontinuation rates of less than 5%, but when you break them up, about 10 to 15% will be due to the adverse effects and mainly due to the unscheduled bleeding, which the woman will have, uh, which, com which constitutes 10% of the total. So that is how uh, we need to break it up. Um, discontinuation rates with it, it not just implant, this is a nice uh, probability curves which are seen here, cumulative probability uh, of of discontinuation is encouraging 18% in, in the first year, which is quite low. But with the good counseling, I think it does come down, uh, you, you know, more and more. The, uh, so you can see here that the, the, the circles are amenorrhea and th those are not the reasons why the woman discontinue, but it is more because of the bleeding irregularity. So we go ahead here. And this slide shows beautiful frequency distribution of clinical satisfaction rates and the dark blue is very satisfied. So response after 12 insertions in percentage is very satisfied for the, um, uh, by the method. And this is about implant site reaction. And you can see that the majority of women do not develop and those who do develop, they are all minor and very short lasting. I had a local bruising in a patient uh, recently which settled in three or four days time. Uh, lactating mothers can safely use this method. Uh, there is no adverse effect on the growth of the baby or, or any, on any milestone or even in the levels of it or not just in the baby's blood. 
the, therefore, the WHO MEC category eminently, just like Dr. Sunita was telling, that it can be given, you know, uh, WHO says can be inserted after the fourth postpartum a week in the breastfeeding mothers and non-breastfeeding, it can be inserted even before post-abortion within five days, etc. Now, the, there has been a recent recommendation that it can be used as an immediate postpartum method also, and evidence is very quickly generating in favor. And recently in our workshop at AICOG, Dr. Leslie Reagan uh, very aptly said that when the woman leaves the hospital after childbirth, she should be carrying a LARC method um, uh, or any other contraceptive, and she should be carrying the contraceptive either inside the uterus or in her arm or in her purse. So uh, that was a very powerful message that she gave for postpartum contraception. I was very happy that she spoke in our workshop. So uh, most patients were satisfied. These are data. The bleeding, why it happens. There are some details of why it happens because of downregulation of estrogen receptors and change in the endometrial vasculature and some angiogenesis factors, et cetera. And um, uh, it is always better to, to, to counsel women about this uh, unscheduled bleeding. And it's, it's good to know that if in the first three months, she's not suffering much, she's unlikely to get any more unscheduled bleeding later. So the bleeding patterns in the first three months by and large determines broadly predictive of what is going to happen for the next three years. Most studies have addressed scheduled bleeding, unscheduled bleeding in the context of a 90 day reference period. And these are studies which give more detail and those who are interested should go through such studies. I think I will not uh, go through them. So uh, this is something which I have spoken earlier that uh, women with dysmenorrhea will have uh, good uh, relief uh, resolution in almost 80% of women. Okay, so 11% uh, of women might discontinue due to bleeding if we do not take care. So identify the appropriate patients for contraception implant. That is the clinical skill that we need to have. And we can include it in the basket in nearly all women, nulli paris or paris, married or unmarried, any age, um, post a bottle, post miscarriage, spontaneous or post ectopic smokers, uh, um, breastfeeding women, anemic, varicose veins, anything is a go. And um, insertion and removal procedures, strong recommendation that however simple it might seem, it is extremely important to have quality training for insertion and removal. Because I think by now, over our several years of work with Family Welfare Committee of so many be, be, uh, eminent uh, uh, chairpersons working before me, and I too made my humble contribution and Ashish is continuing. We have always, always maintained that we need to counsel well. And also we need to understand that these are you know, public health matters and any fallouts will not be kindly looked upon because we are offering mainly preventive health to these women and we better not slip up. So good history, contraindications to be ruled out, remind about safe sex practices because this will not protect against STI. And good candidates are those who want reversible, want long-term, have no contraindication, accept the procedures and accept the change in menstrual bleeding pattern. In summary, the global epidemic of an unintended pregnancy, indeed it is a global epidemic. For India, it is a continuous epidemic. I mean, it is an everlasting epidemic. That is the reason we had this kind of population growth in spite of so many efforts. Uh, it is attributable to irregular use, incorrect use, and therefore a reliable method should come in. And um, I think this is a very aptly placed method today. It is well tolerated, very efficient, quick return to fertility. And this is a very small insertion video, which I will be playing at top speed because this is the inner side of the arm where um, I will try to mute this so that, uh, you know, I will be, so that is, in from the applicator it is removed and uh, the beveled edge is put inside the skin the skin is lifted up 
and the needle is inserted subdermally. And, um, and these are the details of the marking site, which are on the surface of the triceps muscle, much below the sulcus where the neurovascular bundle is going to be. Sorry about that. Okay, so uh, that is the implant seen inside the needle there. And um, that is how the needle is going in there. There's a very small requirement of uh, about two cc of xylocaine. Uh, two ml of one person xylocaine needs to be put inside this track. These are the markings which are made eight to 10 centimeters from the medial epicondyle on the surface of the triceps muscle. And then we see the... Uh, you know, the, the, the needle going in and it delivers the, it's very simple actually. Once we are able, once we deliver the uh, device uh, by pushing down the, uh, this uh, uh, retractor, the device is in place under the skin and the needle just disengages itself from the skin. And there you see uh, the device will not be uh, will not be present here. The needle will be completely retracted after the insertion has been done. And all we have to do is to put an adhesive bandage there, which can be removed after 48 hours. The insertion is equally simple. It is mandatory that, that the woman is able to feel the device all the time at all times. And if we if you depress the upper end, the lower end should pop up like this for for uh, for uh, you know, removal, and we can put a just 0.5 ml of xylocaine under the device and put a very, very, very tiny incision, maybe two millimeter, and that shows the device coming out. And there you have it, that is the removal. So gynecologists who are so adept at doing complicated cesareans and uh, so many laparoscopic endoscopic surgeries, I don't think this is difficult at all. So there you go. That was my presentation, brief presentation on implant. And um, I would like now comment from Dr. Lakshmi, followed by Sunita and Ratnamala. The, uh, madam, the, the floor is all yours for you to give your messages, Hello. strong Let's messages. Expert speak, Dr. Ratnamala and Dr. Singhal. Yes, please. Dr. Singhal, uh, we would like you to share your experience as uh, yes. uh, country lead on this. Thank you. Absolutely. So, thank you very much. So, can I, uh, can you make me the host? Can I share my screen? Yes, yeah, yeah, you can. Mitali, you can co-host. You can. You are co-host. Yeah. So, is my screen seen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. of course. It is seen. It is seen. Okay, so thank you very much, Shoba, for a you know very comprehensive information, very much relevant to all the Foxians over here. So, so since you asked me spe specifically to talk about how government has adopted it, and in fact, many people do ask me that why is government so late in introducing this? So I would just say that public health or the, at the national level, looking at the population of India and looking at the democracy and um, the way family planning is viewed in India, government takes its own you know, time, views and ways, all uh, aspects of introducing any new contraceptive and uh, the strategy of the government has been that every decade they have introduced some new contraceptives, right? So in the 50s, condoms, we had only condoms and oral pills and the permanent methods. 60s, Lippies Loop was introduced. 92, NSV was brought in. And 2002, the, there was a resurgence of IUCD, and that is the 380A model was introduced. 2003 ECPs, 2012 IUCD 375, which is a, which was commonly, you know, popular as a multi-load. So that is also a part of government's basket. And 2016 was again a historical year after a delay of almost two decades. The injectable. DIMPA was introduced along with an indigenous contraceptive that is Saint Croman was introduced and in 2023 that is this year subdermal single rod contraceptive implant etonogestal has been introduced along with it 
is introduced the subcutaneous variety of the DIMPA that's called sub-Q MPA. Now, coming to implants, many people ask why implants in India? So, am I audible? Is, is there some issue? Audible. No, perfect. It is perfect. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. I, I heard some sound, so I thought, let me, uh, you know. So, uh, just to tell you that the world data, this is about the evidence. India, Indian government has really looked at all the global evidences. And 25 million women in across the globe are currently using uh, the, um, the contraceptive implant. Of course, there are, in some countries, it's only the two rod which is available, and in some countries, it's a single rod. So looking at the Southeast Asian countries, particularly, you know, the countries around India, Nepal, it is 5% of method mix. Indonesia, it is 4%. Bangladesh, 2%. Philippines, 1%. So why, why not India? Now, what about, you know, it is it is not so easy to bring a new method in the public health system. As you all know, the sensitivities around it, you know, there are so many uh, factors, the community, the media, and, you know, we all, the providers, you know, we have our own uh, issues, we have our own decisions, we have our own, uh, you know, knowledge and your our own personal uh, opinions about it. But if we look at the, if you want to see the data, the data says that before government, you know, barged into bringing this into the public health uh, basket, they an ICMR was asked to conduct some trials, and ICMR has done a trial in 1993. That was now plan two, six rods. We all know about it. Then in 2002 and 2012, phase three trials on implanon, the earlier version of this single rod, this implanon, they, they used to use a, a trocar, you know, to insert the implant and that was not barium impregnated. So the report was released, National Consultative Committee was there in 2015-16 and it was approved, agreed that this will be added into the basket. DCGI approved it in 2015 and in, from 2018 onwards, government allowed its usage in the private sector. So since then, many, many private sector practitioners have been using it to bring it into the public health the, and to look at the cost effectiveness. Government got a, a health technology assessment done again by a wing of ICMR and it proved the evidence says that yes, it is cost effective. So based on all these things, now government has initiated the limited introduction in the 10 states of the country. Why? Why only 10 states? Because number one, the commodity is not just yet indigenously being produced. So it will be imported. Government will get it imported and then distribute it in these 10 states. You know, a specific amount would be given to each state based on some formulas, which uh, the government has, you know, based on their consumption, their population, and the possibility that is anticipated that how much usage are they going to do. So these 10 states, and out of these 10 states also, each state, only two districts have been identified. One is the capital city, and another one, again, based on some uh, demographic data and some, F some FP statistics, these have been picked up. So these 10 states, you know, the government has tried to pick up from north, south, east, west, you know, a good combination has been picked up. Now, how does government want to introduce this in limited manner? So the pre-implementation phase where lots of assessments have been done, planning has been made, national dissemination was done in the month of March this year. That, is, that was a pre-implementation phase. Now in the phase one, which, will, which is going to last for three years, this introduction into the selected districts has been done. Now this will include a capacity building of trainers and the providers from these 10 states. Now how the government selected national core trainers and that happened to be Dr. Ratan Mala uh, and myself. And we have trained through our, you know, with our support, uh, and other organizations support um, from the public health medical colleges, two people, two persons, two gynecologists have been selected by government from these 10 states and they have all been trained as master trainers. So now each of the 10 states have two master trainers 
they have been given the responsibility of taking it down further. And how will they do it? They will develop state trainers. In each of these 10 states, state master trainers will be developed who will further, you know, in a cascade mode, will train the service providers and the service initiation will be done. So that is the government's plan. So after three years, there'll be a pan India rollout where, you know, by that time, government will have good experience, particularly from the medical colleges and the district hospitals. So that is how the government plans to take it. So this is the um, reference manual, you know, this is just in line with the all earlier uh, guidelines and manuals and um, of government of India on various other uh, methods, female sterilization, male sterilization, um, injectables, oral pills, IUCD. So this is just has been developed just in line with that. Uh, it, it undergoes uh, through a rigorous process of reviews by all uh, high level technical resource group experts. And this manual has, you know, uh, three sections. So technical aspects, and which includes insertion and removal, something which Shobha just spoke about in detail. Then there are managerial aspects that how in a medical college, how the state government officials and the gynecologists, the HOD or the other gynecologists from the departments are going to take up. And a third section on extra three is all about guidance notes and formats that how the program will be done. You know, things are different in public sector and private sector. Private sector, it is the individual doctor who is responsible and it, it's up to his or her you know plan of programs how he is going he or she is going to do this in his or her institution clinic or hospital but in government the system is different because the all from the periphery all the data all the information all the adverse events complications uptake everything is to be rooted you know through the channel of data pickup and recording, it has to go to the government and based on the data analysis, further decisions, changes in the program and implementation is made. So this one single manual, manual which is available now uh, on the ministry's website, mhfw.nic.in, NHM if you go to, so this link is available there, there anybody can download it and go through it. Along with that, you know, it's, it's not just, uh, you know, training the doctors, there should be a demand in the community as well, you know. So to support the demand, government also came up with, you know, with some guidances, some information to the field workers. For example, in many states, there are ASHAs, there are community health officers, you know, CHCs, PHCs, sub-centers. So there is this piece, these new booklets have also been released. And this is, these are very simple things in Hindi and English. States are translating this also. So this is what is being good, done by government of India. Now, so I'll come to Shobha's question that public sector is fine. Government has a robust plan to take it forward. What about the private providers? So about the private providers, you know, it was already allowed in 2019. And the commodity, the product which I'm just uh, which, uh, talking about is uh, manufactured by one company, Organon. And they have been approaching, and in fact, out of all the audience people listening here, must have been approached by Organon already, you know, to for a training, a short training that they provide. And in that, they teach you on a model, so they show you all these videos, and you can start insertions. But then I think uh, it is not very convincing for many people. Some people are, of course, uh, like Shobha said, they go forward on their own, learn more about it, practice, and one, once they are confident, they can start doing it. But what about others? Uh, from the Foxy platform, I think Foxy should come forward and help those providers who need more information, more knowledge, and some practice before they really start this in their clinics. So for them, uh, you know, there are various options. I think currently Dr. Ashish Kale, who is there, can we can jointly discuss and develop a program that how the interested practitioners, I, I'm sure many of the people uh, listening to this webinar must be interested in, in this. So I think they can all contact um, the FOXI or ICOG and, you know, a program can, of you know, um, practice on models and maybe observation on clients can be 
planned. I have, you know, the organization where I work, uh, they have a Uran collaborated and Jaydeep, Dr. Jaydeep Tank um, is the point person from Foxy for this Uran collaborated, which is actually uh, the, if this is for the private sector players to increase the usage of sexual and reproductive health commodities and services, particularly among young people, by addressing the asymmetries of information and market inefficiencies. So what is meant by this is that, they, as I said, they don't have people want to give more and more services, but they are, they are really gaps. So here, this Sudan Collaborative through Foxy can come up and develop chart out plans. So the purpose actually is very, very simple, that to increase the equitable, voluntary, and informed utilization of SRH products and services amongst young people. So in the uh, priority geographies. Now, if I say through this, through JPAIGO, I think we, we are working in this uh, five states. So anybody working, residing or practicing in Assam, Orissa, Chhattisgarh, Jharkhand, and Madhya Pradesh, can all is already you know a part of could be a part of the Uran collaborative. So maybe uh, someone will approach you from Uran to you know enroll you into this. Uh, that's called uh, mapping. There is already in progress. So once you are approached or reached by these, if you show your interest that you are interested in learning about implants, definitely a plan will be made and you will be put into you know practice. Like, uh, you know, on models and also on that. So this uh, on the client, some observation things can be done. So this is one platform where at least in these five sets and subsequently with Foxy, we can work further. And in that we can develop a plan with the Foxy Family Welfare Committee to develop batches and then, you know, facilitate their learning. So that's, I think, one way. And we always have the support from national government as well as the state government. So we have to come up with a plan. And I think uh, Dr. Ashish uh, wants to uh, say something. I see his hand is raised. So yeah. please Simba, go ahead. Please stop sharing your screen. That will be nice. I have done that. Yeah, Already? thank you so much. That was a very lucid presentation. And, you know, it was like a master speaking on uh, on his pet project. And it is very obvious that you have really put in your sweat and uh, very hard work into this. Thank you for sharing all that with us. Yes, Dr. Ashish Kale. Yes, please. Uh, yeah, uh, just uh, for information to all of you, uh, what is Fox is doing about the implants? Uh, I thought it is an apt uh, time wherein I shall put up uh, the things what we are doing. Uh, the Organon uh, uh, people, they are come down to us uh, for the Foxy uh, platform. I am in a uh, uh, in a position wherein I will I am talking to Dr. Pai, who is a president of Foxy. And uh, with his uh, initiative, we are doing the batches of 10-10 um, uh, TOTs, uh, that means the trainer of trainers. Uh, in a in a foxy societies wherein we are we are going to uh, go to the uh, medical colleges because if the professors and associate professors are going to get trained and we will be having a same a little bit reduced price of the uh, implants can be given to those who are interested for putting it up so this project we are already uh, thinking of and uh, we are going to initiate it by the month of june Excellent. That's an excellent initiative. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very, very good initiative. I think the right way of the right platform to begin, because I think more quality supervision will be there in medical colleges and yes, more stringent, uh, you know, training will happen. Uh, uh, we will take Dr. Uh, Ratnamala Madam's uh, presentation. Dr. Lakshmi, what do you say? And then, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm yeah. waiting to hear her. Yeah, Please. thank you. Yeah. Dr. Singhal, it was really, we learned a lot and I'm so happy that you are Japaigo head and uh, you are coordinating wow. with our government of India. And we really wish to see this implant to be used more and more, both in private sector and public sector. Correct. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Lakshmi. And I see Dr. Bulbul Sood in the audience and she has also put in a message. So, ma'am, please unmute if, if, if you allow. She uh, has been the country head for Jipaigo and yes, she's yes. the key person who initiated this. Ma'am, yes, if you can, please. 
मिताली इनको वेलकम वेलकम डॉक्टर बुलबुल वेलकम वेलकम टू आर मैम डॉक्टर बुलबुल सो प्लीज आई यू देयर मैम नहीं नहीं वो है मैं टेक पर्सन को बोल अनम्यूट कर दे हां या फ्यू वर्ड्स फ्रॉम यू या हाय थैंक यू वेरी मच आई थिंक एक्सीलेंट प्रेजेंटेशन बाय डॉक्टर शोभा सुनीता एंड ऑफ कोर्स यू नो very nicely uh, shared what the future by dr lakshmi and dr desai so i uh, i agree with uh, you know what uh, sunita was saying that in government it always takes time you know they go through their whole processes and i remember very well in 2016 7 in fact 17 we had taken a team from uh, uh you know made, made up of uh, gynecologists in fact dr uh, um uh, i'm forgetting sorry the president of the foxy at that time uh and uh, you know uh, uh, there were people from karnataka there were people from uh, orissa the vandana gunani was at that time the joint secretary and uh, uh, so when they went to in fact indonesia they saw how successfully the uh, program is being implemented there and i think almost more than 30% of the uh, contraceptive use in indonesia is uh, uh, of implants and they saw in fact in that their in indonesia is the nurses also not just the doctor but the nurses are very effectively uh, both uh, you know inserting the implants and removing it also so i think uh, and uh, in india we always go very uh, you know cautiously so it is good that as uh, sunita said that we are starting with the doctors and you know uh, especially uh, medical college people obgyn professors go down to then the uh, the gdmos i guess and then the nurses but i think it's a very good choice and uh, you know uh, as you said dr shobha you know the it is in fact better than also sterilization and other and it's a law a uh, long acting uh, you know reversible method so uh, with dr ashish and you you know initiating i think i'm sure with everyone else i think it's time to also uh, I, i just want to add here that the private sector is a very important provider of family planning especially in the big cities and uh, you know i was looking at the nfhs five data and you know a large proportion of contraceptives uh, except for sterilization you if you look at the distribution of other whether the ocps or injectables and others is by the private sector so i think it's very important that the you know uh, private sector uh, jumps in quickly and uh, uh, dr shob as you you said 200 almost uh, providers are already their private providers have been trained but they have to be champion in each of the states and i guess districts to you know promote and talk about implants and i think that is something that we need uh, you know to move faster because women in this in country require uh, more choices and implants is a very good choice and thank you very much for thank asking. you dr so that is so wonderful thank you, uh, you ma'am thank you <laughs> can you share now ratna mala ma'am yeah it was wonderful to have dr bulbul with us really mm -hmm. Oh, can you see my slides? Yes, yes, we can. Yes, ma'am, we can. Okay, good afternoon, everybody. I am going to make my talk very brief because already two people have talked about it. However, I would just like to stress that FPI is in the forefront to implement the subdermal implants, and we've been doing it since nineteen twenty one. And in ten of our branches, we started inserting these implants, and also a team of our clinical staff and our program managers. from the head queue headquarters visited nepal and uh, as earlier mentioned the nurses are in, uh, inserting the implants in nepal as well as removing so now uh, over the in 13 clinics we have been using the implants and we intend to extend it to all our 39 clinics which are spread across uh, india and um, recently what happened was that uh, the government of india um in fact uh, we uh, supported the government of india to train 30 master trainers uh, fpi india uh, gave its um, support in the sense that in our clinics 
uh, with the help of our outreach workers, we mobilized clients and we trained um, doctors to actually put implants on the clients. So there were three training of master trainers uh, conducted by FBI India. And uh, this, of course, is the picture of implant. I didn't bring the implant. Dr. Sunita has brought the implant. This is the one which we are using, the implant on NXT. It's a very innovative uh, type of an uh, inserter, and it has got a very beautiful mechanism. Looks very, very simple. And um, the needle itself is very special in the sense it has got a bi bevel tip. One bevel helps you to penetrate the skin, while as the other bevel helps you to go subdermally. So it is a very special bi bevel needle. And the inserter looks very simple. The procedure looks very simple. And I was already mentioned in one of the slides, it hardly takes a minute. But the time taken should be more to decide on the eligibility of the client, to counsel the client, pre-insertion counseling, post-insertion counseling are extremely important. Also, the location of the implant is very important because what happens is uh, it should be about eight to 10 centimeters from the medial epicondyle and about three to five centimeters below the sulcus. This is a very important thing. The location of the implant should be subdermal over the triceps, eight to 10 centimeters from the medial epicondyle and three to five centimeters below the sulcus. I keep harping on this all the time, but it's worthwhile telling this because a correct insertion will reduce the complications. Your complications will be nil if you insert it correctly and removal will be easy when you insert it correctly. So though it looks simple, I, um, I request all the healthcare professionals, whoever is going to insert this implant to learn the procedure correctly so that we will not have complications and our removals will be easy. It takes a little time to uh, learn and once you learn, it becomes very easy. Once you know the trick, it is done. But we have to learn the correct procedure to see that we reduce the complications or we don't have any complications and also our removals will be easy. Um, sorry, I had one more slide where Unfortunately, it has gone. I had one more slide where I showed that we have trained um, 49 um, doctors so far, 30 doctors from the government and uh, five doctors from Japaigo and the remaining doctors are our own FPI doctors. So we have trained them and the total number of clients in these training programs have been 189. And so far we have not had touch wood, we have not had any complications so far, except as Dr. Shobha said, one or two bruising in the skin. And uh, I for one, on behalf of FPI, we are open to any support, we are open to any sort of training and I am a oxy person. Any time, any training, we are ready to collaborate with Foxy, with ICOG. FBI is ready to collaborate with anybody and cooperate. Thank you so much uh, for your um, um, invitation to, to share my thoughts here. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Ratnamala, ma'am. And uh, I must thank the pandemic also because, you know, paradoxically, <laughs> during the pandemic, Foxy yes. was able to generate a little bit of noise for the in uh, implant and uh, we did conduct some virtual trainings and i had the good fortune to train some of the fpai staff also yes i think um, that way uh, some work was done initial work was done and uh, i'm grateful to the presidents who kind of gave us the opportunity to go all out and spread the message about these contraceptives. Because I remember we did for everything, we did it for subcutaneous BMPA, we did it for the emergency contraceptive ulipristal acetate, and we also did it for uh, the implant. So we tried to make a good deal of noise, generated a lot of conversation on these methods, especially the implant, because that was the time when people used to come forward and take virtual training. Eventually, the virtual training did not hold the, you know, test uh, with the government, but it is, it was anyway a beginning. So, uh, I think it had its own role. Now, having said that, yes, uh, the journey forward is not easy. We need to have, that is why Dr. Lakshmi, if you could also 
come in here with your conclusion comments on this session so that we can move on to the next speaker. Yes. Dr. Lakshmi, please. Yeah, I think she is busy with the patient or something. Yeah, I have also uh, seen somebody else in the audience also who were closely, I'm not getting now. Yeah, I think uh, Dr. Parag was not able to join again. So we, we shall go forward uh, only to uh, just to reiterate that Dr. Alpesh Gandhi in 2020 and Dr. Shantakumari, both of them were very supportive when I uh, took up this uh, project of implant and started training. Uh, Dr. Bulbul Sood has commented, Dr. Al Alka Kriplani was one of the member, Achha, she had forgotten the name. Um, Foxy president had been supportive for this method. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Bulbul. For the, as I said, every president feels that they should go all out and support family planning. But uh, I think uh, this is a very complex field and a lot of innovative thought and team building and collaboration is needed, much more than any other intervention. That is what I feel. So uh, I think uh, both the leaders today, uh, both uh, Dr. Sunita and Sunita Singhal, and Dr. Ratnamara Desai, they are ready to um, uh, you know, join hands with Foxy and ICOG. And I, I wish for a very bright future for any such collaboration. And I, I sincerely hope that uh, my successor, Dr. Ashish Kale will go forward full force. And uh, I'm always there to join and support. And also I must say that from FPAI also, we hope to do some work in the field of implants independently also. Yeah, uh, as I think Dr. Sunavala said something very pertinent and he said that women themselves should come forward and, uh, and ask. And that is what Dr. Bulbul Sudha has also just now uh, posted that yes, demand generation is something which is at, you know, it is always at an abysmal low and it is always the implementers, the program officers who have to kind of go on offering the method and the ASHA workers who have to sweat it out. But if the woman herself can be made to understand, so probably we need to work on demand generation in a very big way. I think Sunita and Ratna Madam will agree with me that demand generation is a very key factor. So Dr. Lakshmi, can we have you? Okay, so that uh, kind of takes me to the next speaker now. And uh, let me just share my screen. But I. I would kind of be delighted if my experts would stay on and, uh, you know, would kind of support us in the rest of the program. Sure. I need to share the, uh, please excuse me, I need to share the slides of CV slides. Yeah, here I am. So our next chairpersons are um, Dr. Bharti Maheshwari the erstwhile uh, highly successful chairperson of the Foxy MTP committee, 18 to 20. Um, she is professor and head of department of Ops and Gyne and IVF, Muzaffar Nagar Medical College at Muzaffar Nagar and uh, fellow in medical education, governing council member of ICOG along with me, the secretary APCOG also, the state body uh, in UP and also the uh, president of Media Ops and Gyne Society. Of course, she has been a prolific author and a lot of work she has done in safe abortion. And of course, dear Ashish, Dr. Ashish Kale is actually a very keen infertility specialist, but showing a lot of promise in the field of family welfare now as its chairperson. He's also the secretary of Pune ob Society and executive member of IAGE and clinical secretary at Desar. So... Here is a young man who is so versatile and is a champion of so many causes and we are very proud that he has taken up family welfare as well. So I welcome both the chairpersons and um, uh, Ashish, are you there, Ashish? Yes, madam. Uh -huh. yes. Can you please, yeah. uh, Bharti, yes, are you there, dear? Bharti? Did you see Bharti, Ashish? No? Uh, he's not there, ma'am. Yeah, can you please... Uh, 
introduce Dr. Tripti Nagariya. The name yes, has gone out of the... Yes, yes, I will. Yeah, please. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Tripti Nagariya, she is a MD, FICOG, FAMS. Uh, she is a director and professor dean of uh, PT, uh, P, uh, J, uh, NM Medical College, Raipur, president of Raipur branch, Isoparm. She is a past secretary of AOGCG. Uh, past secretary of ISAR Chhattisgarh chapter, past secretary of IMS Raipur branch, past president of Raipur Society of Obstetric Gynecological Society. She published more than 32 papers uh, and 12 chapters in the books. Past uh, corresponding national editor of Jogi. She is invited faculty for more than 150 conferences, organized international conferences like SAFOMS and uh, National ISAR are uh, here. Uh, we are very keen uh, to listen from you, madam. Uh, I request uh, Dr. Tripti Nagariya, madam, uh, to have her presentation, please. Thank you. Hello, Tripti. Welcome. Hello. Hello, dear. Uh, Tripti, madam, is there? Yeah, she had joined. Hello, Tripti. Hello. I'll call her. Meanwhile, um, Maybe we'll ask Dr. Seema to carry on with the quiz because it's interesting. I'll just call her once. We'll give her yes, that much chance. Yes, but I don't know why she has, she's not seen. I'm either. sure I'm ready. I can take the quiz first. Yeah, yeah, Seema. Yeah, Seema. Yeah. I know that. Eight minute, huh? Eight minute. Eight minute. Just give me a few seconds. Meanwhile, Dr. Sunita has any parting shots she can deliver. <laughs> Unmute. Uh, Tripti is requesting to unmute. Host has to unmute her. She is very much there. Excuse me. Hello, ma'am. Haan. Unmute uh, Tripti, Dr. Tripti, Tripti. ma'am. Uh, I join nahi hai, so rename, rename, You have rename, to join. Sir. You are not seen. क्या नाम से जॉइन हुए हैं आप अच्छा पंडित जेएनएम रायपुर को अनम्यूट करिए ओके मैम पंडित जेएनएम रायपुर को अनम्यूट करिए पंडित यस तृप्ति यू मस्ट पुट ऑन योर वीडियो देन ऑल दिस कंफ्यूजन विल नॉट बी देयर यस गुड यस राइट you can share your uh, screen, please. Right, right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Shobadi and uh, Dr. Singhal, Dr. Ratmala, ma'am, Dr. Ashish, and Dr. Bharti. So, may oh. I share my screen? Yeah, please make her the co host. Quickly. Yes, yeah. Yes. You can share. Is it visible? Not yet. Is it visible? Not yet. Not yet. Okay. Any problem? Is it visible? Not yet, Tripti. Why? आपने ओपन करके रखा है प्रेजेंटेशन जी 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 यस यस हाँ हो गया इज़ इट यस प्लीज मेक इट फुल स्क्रीन इज़ इट ओके इट इज़ ओके राइट मेक इट फुल स्क्रीन तो थैंक यू सो मच फॉर गिविंग मी दिस अपॉर्चुनिटी एंड विदाउट वेस्टिंग माय फर्दर टाइम ऑफ द ओल अगस्त ऑडियंस the contraceptive choices for the modern women, as far as this is concerned, we have listened to the recent one and the most upcoming uh, contraceptive method in the form of the implant. However, till the time comes when it is available to all the people, all the women of uh, India and others in both private as well as in the public sectors, still the Women, women in India, they have got all the opportunities to use whatever is available to them apart from this. So 
let us consider what about the contraceptive choices for the modern women i am saying this modern women because today still if we consider the unmet need it is very high however most of the women in india they are now working they are day in and day out involved in some or other activities and they are more aware about the family planning methods which are available and they are thinking about their right when to choose and how many number of the children they should have so it's in this context it becomes very important to think about all what is available to them and what best out of them they can use so while considering the right choice of the contraception uh, madam accurate... sorry to interrupt you uh, can you put it on the slide show uh, because it's the slides are the same it's not moving kripti it's not moving why it is not there ma'am why it is not there i'm not finding the things why it is not there can you see the things properly or you are not able to see anything we can see madam but it is not in a slide show mode but it is fine now at least the slides are moving Okay, so we are facing any problem? Is there any problem? Hello? Okay. Uh, Ashish, what happened actually? I had taken a call. What happened? Yeah, uh, Madam, the slideshow, uh, it's yeah. not showing the properly slides. So I think mm -hmm. she's lo logging it again. Or maybe uh, she's doing uh, the slideshow more call. I think so. I am just calling her because, in the interest of the audience, maybe we must take. Ha, Tripti, bolo. Kya takli ho rahi hai? Ha? Hello? Hello, Tripti. Yeah, so Tripti will be joining in a bit. Meanwhile, Ashish, I think I will share my screen and we will introduce Dr. Seema Hakim. Please yes, introduce her and we'll take her quiz presentation. Yeah, yeah, here you go. I hope you'll be able to see. Such a long CV that the fonts yeah. have become very small. <laughs> it's a really my pleasure as a committee chair of the Foxy uh, to introduce such a uh, eminent person. I think you can skip it. <laughs> no, no, ma'am. Uh, it's a really nice pleasure. It's an eminent uh, speaker, and uh, ma'am, you are a professor. 
she is a professor and uh, uh, in the department of obgyn jain medical college amu uh, there is so many achievements uh, just a mimit sir i think it i think you can skip it please should She's i chairman of the established uh, seema ji one minute let him do his AMU job Adivan. Uh, she is a, a coordinator medical education unit organized uh, several faculty uh, development programs uh, she held uh, several administrative posts in amu north zone coordinator of foxy quiz committee in 2010 and 2021 organizing chairperson of midterm upog in 16th april uh, 2016 she is a scientific secretary of 19th uh, upcog in november 2007 she uh, she is a significant contribution as a member in a rural health committee foxy into in 1999 to 2003 she is a joint secretary of uh, 10th upog in november 1997 uh, and executive member of upcog past secretary of upsc agoi uh, awards there are many awards to her credit and publications she is uh, totally having a 98 publications uh, eight chapters and uh, here uh, is she with us uh, to have uh, her presentation over to you madam thank you very much uh, one minute I... i'll stop i'll stop yeah. yeah 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 you're welcome to share and thank you for coming today thanks a lot please share your uh, screen yeah yeah is my yeah it is visible please make it a full screen yeah, yeah correct correct all right uh, yes first of all i my thanks to the organizer especially dr shobha gudi for considering me uh, for conducting this quiz in this prestigious scientific meet uh, i am really thankful to you Uh, that you gave me this opportunity uh, there are a set of questions and how are they going to answer dr shobha in the chat box they have yeah, to write ashish ashish and me will be watching the chat box yeah. and i encourage everybody to quickly put and i might uh, mention the first two responses so that will okay. be fun who is first <laughs> yeah with the right answer first so. finger so first okay. finger first yeah right. and you can be very brief in writing your answer uh, so here goes the first question why do newer progesterone have lower androgenicity just in brief one or two point why do they have lower androgenicity newer progesterone should i give uh, 30 second each how to give it to you you didn't get it dr shobha you are muted so should i give 30 second for yeah, so two people have responded dr mariam and dr neeti as increased shbg achal says it avoids hirsutism that i didn't get so uh, the first two answers were that mariam and neeti So you can yeah, move forward the, with the answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The correct answer is, of course, it uh, decreases androgenicity is because of increased serum hormone binding globulin, thereby it decreases the free testosterone. So it is good for those cases who have acne hirsutism along with menstrual problem, or even for treatment in PCOS for acne and hirsutism. This can be the right. So the second question is, Dino just is a dash generation progesterone you have to write with generation progesterone it is a combination of dash microgram ethanyl estradiol and dash microgram dinogest and it, uh, that can be used as an ocp okay so i am having uh, dr mariam dr neeti 1 plus cph as saying fourth generation and abha darwal as saying fourth generation yeah uh, that's the only answer i am getting now Uh, yeah you can go ahead with that so yeah this should go i ahead. yeah yeah okay so it has 30 microgram of ethanyl estradiol and 2 mg of dino just that answer was not uh, that question was not uh, not answered probably is it so dr shobha 
so far not answered we can go okay. ahead we can go okay ahead. so our question 3 is which progestin progestin has an anti mineralocorticoid effect so far nothing so far nothing oh <laughs> <laughs> some time yes dr mariam says drosperinone yes okay that is the correct answer so anti mineralocorticoid activity is in drosperinone and it is because of it's a analog of spironolactone uh so fourth question is uh, miss a who is on ocp developed severe gastroenteritis which lasted for 48 hours she had not missed or vomited any of her pills but she reported to you for her concern what will be your advice for her uh something is pv can be given what is that i cannot understand it what is pv ha uh, can yeah. be given pata nahi yeah, yeah. What is that? <laughs> PV. It can be inserted PV oh, during oh, that. Oh, 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 per vaginal. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. That's what she said. Yeah, that's a good thought. Inserted. Yeah. She has put it as inserted. Yeah, no issues. Yeah. Uh, no issues is somebody else has told that there is no problem. So, what do you think? No, no. I I don't think that is the only answer that should have been given. Of course, for future she can put it and uh, on. like whenever she develops gastroenteritis or anyone developing gastroenteritis during that period they can insert it per vaginally the oral tablet should not be taken during that period but she has already taken it so what that no correct answer is there she should be advised to have a backup method for 7 days because uh, contraceptive effect will not be there if she has a gastroenteritis during that period so for 7 days she has to use a backup method so that is a more important message ki yes. even if she has not missed the pill mm. she should be taking a backup method during gastroenteritis absorption is really erratic at that time yes. and one is never yes. sure dr kalyani shrinivas has responded that urine pregnancy test should be done but i don't think um, you know it becomes positive before 3 weeks of the yeah yeah right that's now. true that's true please go ahead yeah okay so for fifth question is miss s wants to use combined oral contraceptive she has a strong family history of colorectal cancer is it safe for her to use coc you can answer it yes or no no uh, yes yes safe safe yes yes who, who answered dr uh, neelima dr mariam dr neeti okay. dr Dr. Anchal, however, Dr. Anchal Gupta, however, is saying no. Avanti is saying yes. No, no. Baba Darwal is saying yes. So, what should we tell them? Yeah, it it is very safe to use, and the nurses' health study reported about forty percent reduced risk of colorectal cancer associated with eight years of previous use of oral contraception. Yeah, yeah. So it is protective. Uh, correct. So correct. Be. Maryam correctly said it is protective. Yes, very yeah. good. Next, please. So yeah. next one is uh, name this implant. We have heard so much about it, so nobody should fail in this question. And which hormone does it contain? Have they answered? i think they must have answered those who have heard the talk they must have answered it correctly and you doctor a, a lot of good answers there a lot, oh, lot of good, good answers now uh, there is a message from dr lakshmi uh, dr seema i just wanted to convey that after 10 questions are over let us finish dr tripti's talk and then we'll come back for the next 10 questions that should be okay isn't oh, it fair enough fair thank enough thank you so much thank oh. you so Okay. Yeah, we'll go ahead. Okay. So next question is, of course, in plenon and itano, just still nobody should fail in this question. I said, which hormone does this contraceptive device contain? And name two contraindication specific to this device, not whole whole uh, contraindication of IUCD, just specific to this device. So liver not just still everybody is responding. Contraindication hmm. specific. Abhi aaya hai breast cancer aaya hai. Ah. Breast cancer आया two they will have to tell two नीले माँ नीले माँ याद है उन्हें कहा है breast cancer अवंती ने कहा है multiple fibroids and breast cancer no no fibroid normal uterine cavity abnormal uterine cavity नीले माँ कहते हैं abnormal cavity 
Uh, in fibroid, we should be clear, we can give LNG and size is the only thing that matters. Yeah, in and distortion of cavity also. No? Distortion yeah, of, no. size more than three centimeter with fibroid, that becomes uh, really difficult. And of course, if the cavity is badly distorted and some mucus. Yeah, you can give the answer. There, there will be contraindication to other uh, device or, as well. Uh, well. My question is very specific to mm. this device. That will be contraindication to other also. Correct, correct. I understand that. Ab de dijiye contraindication. <laughs> Breast cancer, cervical, uterine cancer and liver. Liver tumor. Correct. That liver becomes tumor. a contraindication. Correct. Correct. Question 8 is identify this contraceptive device and uh, what are the doses of hormone released per day by this device. That means you will have to tell the name of hormone and how much is released Excellent. per day and of course Very name good. of the device. Very good. Newer ring. Avanti has told Nuva, Archana has told Nuva. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hormone Batao. Yeah. Neha Mariam also say Nuva ring. Hormone Bataye, please. Hormone. Hormone and how much? Hormone and how yeah. much? Okay. So Eldestrimine <laughs> is what is being written, I think. <laughs> 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 One, 120 ethanol estradiol, somebody has written. Estrogen progesterone, that's a very beautiful answer. Estrogen progesterone. <laughs> Specific. <laughs> Ethanyl estradiol and etonorgestrel, that is also good. Yeah. Yeah. Now, yeah, you can go ahead with that. Yeah. 120 microgram of etonorgestrel and uh, 15 microgram of ethanyl estradiol. Yeah, I, I think uh, Mariam was very close and Neha were very yeah. close with the answer. What do yeah. Antra and Chaya contraceptive contain? Are ye to bhot a chaya question? I think many of them. Antra and chaya. DMPA, yes. Nilima, apko chaya. Which one is antra and which one is chaya? You will have to specify. Before medroxyprogesterone, yes. Yeah, antra and chaya is ormiloxifen, yes. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. So correct answers. Correct answers, yes. Yeah. And question number 10, what are the doses of estrogen and progesterone released per day from this contraceptive patch? That is ortho evera. Ortho evera patch is not available for us, but you can tell. Yeah. I think it is popular elsewhere. Yeah. It's a rage actually, patches abroad. Yeah. So maybe you should know about it. It's not popular because of hot and humid yeah. weather also. Yeah. Ortho Evra. You can go ahead because I don't think people are aware about this. Ah, okay. 203 something. Wait, 35 something. microgram of ethanyl estradiol and 150 microgram of noril or gestromine. Okay. Each day. Noril gestromine. Noril gestromine. Yeah. yeah. It's so, so tongue I twister. Think... The name is so much tongue twister, na? <laughs> so, should I finish or? Yeah, yeah, yeah I think we'll give a break. Just take a break. Yeah. Yeah, take a we'll break. take a break. Thank you so much, Dr. Yeah. Seema. It's very interesting. Very okay. interesting. Yeah. So, Dr. Tripti, I think um, yeah. Ashish we'll is still hanging stop. on. Uh, Seema, yeah. please stop screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I am trying to do. Yeah, yeah. Tripti, just unmute yourself. I'm trying to do. Haan, ek minute, you take, take. You have to uh, video stop share. TV. That's all. You have to put Actually, your click what on is screen. happening? I Haan. don't know why my computer is playing naughty right now. It's <laughs> coming and going. Achha, ek kaam kar sakte hai aap. आप लॉग आउट हो जाइए अगर ये नहीं हो रहा है हां नहीं हो रहा है वही तो आप लॉग आउट हो जाइए लीव द वेबिनार एंड 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 जॉइन अगेन प्लीज इज इट थैंक यू या या ओके ओके तृप्ति यू जॉइन तृप्ति तुम नहीं आई कैन सी तृप्ति वीडियो ऑन करो स्क्रीन ऑफ करो इट्स ऑलरेडी ऑन या वी आर वेटिंग फॉर यू टू शेयर राइट प्लीज क्या हुआ मेरे को भी भेज देना एक बैक बैकअप तो मैं भी प्ले कर दूंगी आपका चलो ओके तृप्ति आ रहा है स्क्रीन हां ठीक है या इट हां हां इसमें टॉक दो कोई प्रॉब्लम नहीं वी कैन सी हां स्लाइड मूव हो रहा है देखो अभी ठीक है हां ठीक है ठीक है ठीक है स्लाइड मूव हो रहा है ना तुम्हारा हां मेरा तो आप किस में आ रहा है ना मूव करके देखो हम कॉन्ट्रासेप्शन वाला स्लाइड दिख रहा है हमको एक अभी नहीं मूव नहीं हुआ तुम्हारा स्लाइड 9 से 10 पे नहीं गया 
I think your internet is little uh, slow. No, it's okay. I'm going to tell you without it. No, just tap on the slide. Yes, it's done. It's done. Slide will be able to tap it. So it will change. Yes, 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 it will change. तुम सुनाई नहीं आ रही हो, we can't hear you. So considering the consideration when when to start, it should include the accurate information about the effectiveness in the pregnancy means how the women will consider and how you will be considering that which contraceptive method will be adequate for that particular woman or not. Before that, we should know the accurate information about the effectiveness in the pregnancy prevention. How effective is the method? What are the health issues which can limit the uses of the some of the contraceptive? Is it easy to use for them? Side effects, including the changes in the usual periods, benefits other than the contraception is equally important whenever we are thinking about any kind of the contraceptive methods. Well, what is the cost? Whether it is affordable within the limit of that women or not? Is it easily available? Because sometimes it may happen that the things may not be easily available in the nearby. Uh, areas or it may be too costly for them to afford about it how means suppose if the person is or the lady is willing for just a spacing or postponing the pregnancy after stopping the contraceptive methods how early the reversibility to the fertility, uh, fertility can occur and whether it is going to give any protection against a sexually transmitted disease or not so all these points are very valid while anybody is selecting or we are offering or we have must also have all the information about that particular contraceptive method so the contraception if we think about the recent and the what is traditionally going on they can be either temporary or the permanent that again depends upon what the women is willing for whether it, it is only being used as a spacer or for the limiter so there can be either barrier methods or the other methods in the method it can be a steroidal contraceptives or non steroidal contraceptives so this is broadly a classification about the things and of course we all know that the method of action or mechanism of action is that they must work means they Dripti must either slides Dripti, sorry to interrupt you your slides are not moving so i will show without any without any uh, power, uh, full so now screen. it is moving yeah now, okay i will go on speaking in this as well yeah you click on that button only yeah right yeah now you are on mechanism of action which we can right yeah. so what actually is important for any pregnancy to occur we know all that there should be either if we are bearing the we are preventing the sperms to move ahead we have, the movement is stopped either by just they are not allowed to enter into the cervical canal or they are not allowed to pass through the cervix by making the cervical mucus thick making the uterus hostile or putting a intrauterine contraceptive device or patient is not allowed to ovulate and in the permanent of course we have to do the sterilization so all these methods are important and accordingly we have got different types of the contraceptive methods the next is that if we go on speaking about one by one though we have heard a very good lecture from dr shobha and dr shobha ma'am the things which are available to all the women they can be one is a traditional old barrier contraceptive which is still being used by many of the couples so it is not only important for the couple who are not uh, willing to get pregnant or even after delivery the advantage being that it prevents from the std and the hiv it has got no hormonal side effects and of course it can be stopped at any time it is under the control of the partners there is no need of any healthcare provider again very important thing patient can have the supply at their home and there is no need of any healthcare provider it is easy to obtain available in all the places the only thing is that if somebody is allergic if the male partner or the female even is allergic it should not be used and if it is very properly used it is effective as well otherwise 13% up to 13% is the 
failure rate. So one of the good thing is that this is available to all the uh, at all the places and can be used. The other thing which is not very popular and not very often used is a diaphragm, of course, which has got which has to be inserted by the patient at least three hours before and should be left along with the spermicide for six hours after the act of the intercourse so as to have a efficacy of the as contraceptive. This is a new thing which has come up is there's a female condom. It is made up of as against that latex it is made up of polyurethane. It is quite long as you can see it is a uh, Seven, about 17 centimeter long with the two rings, one above and the um, another one is below. It has to, the upper one is to be squeezed, to be put in, to be inserted within the, the vagina. The upper ring should be around the cervix. It should get unfolded out and the outer portion, outer ring covers the labia. So this is how it is applied. This is the outer ring which is covering the labia. It is protecting the labia in fact and also to some extent the lower part of the penis and the genitalia of the male. So this is an excellent method. It is under the control of the female herself. The only thing is after the use, after the use it has to be squared, it has to be rotated and then gradually pulled out. So as to avoid any spillage of the semen into the vagina. Caution is that the person should, it should be applied properly. It should not be loose enough the penis should enter properly in, inside only it should not be in between the ring as well as and the genital tract if it is typically used it can give a protection of up to 5 to 21 percent per hundred um, per hundred women who are using it the other thing so the femidome is very important and very good in the hand of the female herself the contraceptive pastries or the sponges are another thing which can be used consisting, uh, which is having about one gram of the nine nonoxinol. It is a foam which is to be wet and to be squeezed and inserted inside the vagina. It, can, it is effective as far as, as long as 24 hours, even multiple sexual intercourse, because it is having enough amount of the spermicide, it is effective for 24 hours. The only thing is that it may have some amount of the vaginal discharges, irritation or dryness, and some of the female may feel some little bit of burning. So that is the disadvantage. However, it is very effective if it is properly used. It has to be left there on for six hours before its removal. That is also very important. So these are the all barrier contraceptives which are in the hand of the female and those who are not willing to go for the steroidal or other daily taking in of the pills and who are infrequent having intercourse, they can very well use those barrier contraceptives. For others, the steroidal contraceptive and the others are available to them. This is another good method of contraception for in the hand of the or in the basket of the contraceptives. So steroidal contraceptives, they can be, uh, they can be taken by any route like oral, parenteral or they can be impregnated into the devices and they, they can be put in or vaginal ring or the transdermal patches. So there are a variety of the routes by which the steroidal contraceptives can be used. They have got two kinds. They can be again two kinds of the contraceptives. One is a hormonal and non-hormonal if a patient is taking orally. The hormonals can be either combined or the progestin only. If we could talk about the progestin only pills first, then this is as Madam Singhal was telling us that it is on the, as the things move on, progestin only pill came into the, um, into the basket of the contraceptives for the use of the female letter after the oral, uh, combined oral contraceptive pills. This is again, very good method containing only low dose, low dose uh, of the, progesterone and it is therefore very effective because it avoids all the complications which are associated or the side effects with the estrogen and in those patients where estrogen is contraindicated progesterone only pill is of importance it is very safe and effective and another very important thing is that it is safe in the breastfeeding women as well where in the initial phase we are not in a status to give or to prescribe oral hormonal contraceptives so very good uh, 
contraceptive pill in the basket, which can be used by the females who are in the lactating phase as well. The method of function or method, how it is effective will be again because of its progesterone, uh, progesterone it can thicken the cervical mucus, can bring about changes in the endometrium. And in about 15 to 40% of the cases, it can even suppress the ovulation as well. How effective will it be? It's very effective if it is properly used, timely used, means it has to be taken at the proper time at every day. So 1.1 to 9.6 if it is properly used, particularly during the first year, the little bit higher failure rate, otherwise it's very good. In others, it can even control the ovulation, therefore the efficacy can be as good as COCs. However, as with others, it has got certain contraindication because of the progesterone that breast cancer, as Dr. Shobha ma'am was also telling you about the LNGL. So whenever you are using progesterone, you must take care that progesterone should not be given in some of the patients, particularly so if the lady is suffering from the breast cancer, either recently, new onset, or just diagnosed or within five years, liver, having liver disease, unexplained uterine bleeding, or on certain other medications like tuberculosis, HIV, AIDS, and other ep epilepsy, and so on. So in these patients, particularly breast cancer and liver disease, it should not be, it is not advisable. The side effects, side effects, if you are continuously using progesterone, most of the patients, they may feel irregular menstrual bleeding off and on. It can happen. The other progesterone effects like breast tenderness, decreased libido, depression, or the mood changes, headache, nausea, they all can happen. The, another very important thing which must be considered, which must be kept in mind is that on long use, it can affect the bone mineral density. So the patient should be advised to continue to take calcium inadequate amount, either uh, as a dietary uh, supplements or in the form of the medicinal form. So that is one which is very important in that the patient, like the patient can be advised progesterone only pills or in those patients where estrogen is not advisable. The other thing is a progesterone means if somebody is not willing to take every day all over, all over the time, then the long acting like in the form of the injections one can use. Injection in the form of the DMPA, which is either DMPA, which has to be given every 12 weekly or uh, norethindron uh, uh, enanthet in the form of uh, in 200 milligrams every two monthly. So these are the two things which are available, either three monthly or two monthly interval with a grace period of one week in the DMPA and in the second month. So it can be, again, because it is a progesterone, it can be started even at birth in the non-lactating women at six weeks in the postpartum in the lactating women, the efficacy is very high. The only thing is that, again, there is a slight delay in the return of the fertility, about four to six months. In the initial phase, first or second injections, there are irregular bleeding, which is very common, though it is not harmful and it can be managed with the help of the traditional or just symptomatic management can be done. It can produce amenorrhea, if it is continuously second, third, or fourth by the end of the uh, year, many of the patients may become amenorrhic, which may not be acceptable to many. However, it is very advantageous because it will prevent anemia to occur. So it is it should be taken rather as an advantage of the uh, this kind of contraceptive. The only drawback again is that on long term it can produce for a decrease in the BMD. So that is the thing which we should always consider. Apart from this, it has got some non-contraceptive benefit as well. Like it can reduce the risk of the salpingitis. It can reduce the risk of the iron deficiency anemia. It is very good contraceptive when you are thinking in patients with the sickle cell disorders, which is very common in Chhattisgarh. And it can also correct the endometriosis if the patient is having so. It has got both the ways. It is not only long acting, but also it has got many other beneficial effects as well. So it can be advised to the patient and it can be opted by the women. And the thing is that she has not to come again and again for getting the pills or there is no need of every day remembering to take the pill.
Only thing is she has to keep remember, remember the date when she has to come back for another kind of another shot. This is all very nicely explained by uh, Shubha ma'am. So I'm just skipping it over because it is already well covered. Then comes the combined hormonal contraceptive pills. Combined, it is again very traditional, very popular and very commonly used all over India and other places as well, the other part of the country as well. Very effective, very effective uh, in preventing the pregnancy. It has got all the non-contraceptive benefit as well. The return of the fertility is very quick and it can be stopped at any second. So these are all advantages which are associated with the combined hormone contraceptive pills and it is a time trusted pill and which is widely uh, available and widely used as well. Again, if you consider which are, what are the elements, which are the components of it, it there is ethanol estradiol as well as the progestin. Depending upon how much amount of the ethanol estradiol is available, now we are using a third generation, which is even having at the lowest amount of the ethanol estradiol. And it is very uh, effective as well. And at the same time, it, has, uh, it is associated with the less side effects. And so is the progestin. We are using day by day the newer generations of the progestin in the combination with ethanol estradiol to bring about the maximum effect, maximum beneficial effect and avoiding the side effects. The mechanism of action, again, because it is a hormone, again, inhibition of the ovulation, producing endometrial uh, hypoplasia, cervical mucus thickening because of the progesterone, and it is interfering with the tubal motility and thereby preventing the transport. So all the ways it is working practically at every possible place where a contraceptive should work, and that is why it is very, very, very effective. The only thing is that it has to be taken very regularly. It has to be taken very regularly. The female has to remember that she has to take it every day. It can be started from the day one for 21 consecutive days and leaving the seven days of the pill-free. Uh, pill-free tablets can be taken, means hormone-free tablets can be taken. And during that time, the periods of the menses usually start. If one wants to be very sure, that the patient is not pregnant, sometimes the people may start it from the fifth day even. The next pack has to be started means after 21st day of the active pills. On the eighth day, the next active pill should be started, irrespective of whether the patient has bleeding or she, is, she has not menstruated. Because if it is properly taken up from day one, the chances of conceptions are not there. If you are trying to give it after abortion and there is no contraindications, then it can be started even on the day of the abortion. Following ch uh, childbirth in a non-lactating woman, it can be started after three weeks. However, if the patient is lactating, one should wait for six months. And the patient should come for the regular follow-up to tell whether if she is having any complication, any side effects, or it, it is perfectly matching with her demands and she is taking it properly. These and because it has got some side effect as well, so one should come for the follow up. Otherwise, she can take the medicine at her home. If the patient is more than 35 years, of course, a little bit more frequent examinations may be advised. But the thing is that if you will start taking from day one to day uh, to 21, sometimes the patient may have breakthrough bleeding or there may be some ovarian activity during the pill free interval. And to avoid this, an extended regime of the pills are being tried to be taken for more than 21 days. And with this idea, several new 24-day pill methods, uh, pill uh, regimes is available for the use. The side effects, common side effects with the estrogen and the progesterone combinations are both of them, they like that of the estrogen, as madam was rightly asking, Maria, madam, if the patient has got nausea, vomiting, which is a very common side effect with the uh, oral contraceptive pills, the patient may have other changes related to the progesterone and the estrogen as well in the form of the breast tenderness, mood changes and all. 
they can be there but the main complication which can occur and we must remain alert and we must warn we must inform the women are that the patient can develop the deep vein thrombosis so anytime if she is feeling that the lower limbs or the limb is getting uh, swollen up there is edema or redness patient should immediately report so we while counseling the patient while taking giving her all the information we must inform not only the beneficial effect how to use when to use when to come back is also very important and what are the signs with if they are there one should get alert sometimes it happens because of the um, some workload or whatever it is the patient may miss the pill to one or two three four or some others so how to deal with it if the patient has missed only one or two she can take it as soon as possible once she, she remembers it and continue with the remaining one there is no need of any backup however if three or more are missed she will continue the as usual but she has to have some backup method for seven days and if she has missed in the first week there is a pill free interval will be prolonged therefore again she has to use a backup method and if she had got any intercourse during that period should use emergency contraceptive as well and if she is again missing the same in the third week so again the things will be the same that seven days pill free interval before that if she has missed two three four tablets that means again the pill free interval will be prolonged and the chances of conception will be there so patient should start this pill uh, this packet should be continued until the last one is used up but without giving a prac another new pack should be started so there should not be any pill free interval in this period so that is how we should advise and we should counsel the patient how to continue with the uh, oral contraceptive pills of course there are contraindications where it should not be used like the lactating women less than 6 weeks and hypertension known case of the vascular diseases or history of deep vein thrombosis and focal migraine again very important if the patient is having this migraine should not use this vascular migraine is not advisable to use oral contraceptive pills so the contraindications are well defined and we must know about them before asking anybody to take and this should be informed to the workers who are working in the periphery in the phcs in the uh, remote areas rural areas so before giving this pill to the patient they should also be well aware about the contraindication when to use and when not to use in whom patient it should be used with caution who are the patient who should be referred to the uh, medical practitioners and counsel for any other kind of contraceptive pills so it is very important though very commonly used but we must be cautious while using in, in the ocp or prescribing ocp in certain patients and at the same time we should always counsel if you have missed the period and uh, missed the pill then what should be done so has to have maximum efficacy the same thing if the patient is not willing to take it daily the thing can be given in the form of the newer ring the newer ring is another good method of uh, supplying the oral this hormonal contraceptive to the patient with uh, which is placed into the uh, vagina for 3 weeks on and 1 week off so it's very important that the same effect can be there but patient is need not patient need not to take it daily just insertion once for 3 weeks and take it off for 7 days and reinsertion or new pack insertion the next for on the fourth week it is again very effective and madam has rightly put the question about it what does it contain and how much it is released per day so this is a, another good device for in the hand of the female for as a choice of the contraceptive do uh, transdermal patch not very well available but it is another good thing which can be applied which is in the hand of the female herself the same thing it has to one patch is to be applied every week on the same day for 3 weeks there is no patch on the fourth week 
because in, during this period there will be some menses and again on the same day in the next at the end of the fourth week the another patch is to be applied the thing which is to be uh, informed to the patient is if it gets fall off or falls off or it becomes loose within 24 hours it is it is still having some stickiness it should be reapplied if not then it can be replaced if it is within 48 hours it has gone off or you are late by refreshing or rechanging replacing the thing for within 48 hours you can apply replace it and the next will be applied on the same uh, 14th day the if you have forgotten to apply it for more than 48 hours a backup method is a must so she must continue with any backup method till the effect is there so it is again very effective if typically used like 98 percent effective the thing is as ma'am single has already informed it is an indigenous method which has been developed available in the market, available in the family planning program of the government of India as well. Very safe, very effective. It can be given in the breastfeeding mother. So lactating mother have got a number of the choices now available in their hand. The ease of taking is always there, twice a week for three months, followed by once a week in the subsequent weeks. It can be, it is to be started on the very first day of the period. On prolonged use, it can be, bring about oligomenorrhea or amenorrhea that is again helpful because it will prevent anemia to occur. The only thing is that the patient may have a little bit of the cramps in the abdomen. So it's very good uh, method of the contraceptions available in the basket. We have something to offer to the women who are not willing to take every day. It is not having any mm, hormones so the side effects of the OCP is av avoided in this. It is selective estrogen receptor modulator. So it has got some, at some places in the body, a weak estrogenic effect at others, it has got a strong anti-estrogenic effect, which is there over the uterus and the breast. So very good method. But again, as with others, after all, it is a human uh, being who is taking it, she may miss. So what about missing a pill? If she misses it, she should take it as soon as it is pos uh, possible, as soon as she remembers it. If the pill is missed by one or two days, but lesser than seven days, a normal schedule should be continued. The client need to use some backup method till the next period starts so that to remain confirmed that the patient will not become pregnant. But if the pill is missed for more than seven days, means two consecutive in the first week, or otherwise once a week, uh, when she's in the once a week and she's missed it for more than seven days, the client needs to start taking it all over again, like a new user. That is twice a week for three months and then once a week. So. Again, it is very important that whatever method if you are using on a daily basis or even in a twice a week or once a week, you have to be very regular to take it. Otherwise, the things may be messed up. If the periods are delayed by more than 15 days, a pregnancy test should be done or can be done to rule out the pregnancy. So, Centromon is another good thing because it is avoiding everyday uh, intake of the medicine. And it is effective as well. It is easily available in the government hospitals as well as in the market. But if the person is not willing to take all this, all every day taking medicines or even twice a week or once a week or any other methods, then what is in the hand means this is for the infrequent uh, having coitus or by accident if the patient has failed to do um, in some of the contraceptive use, then emergency contraception comes into the play. Emergency contraceptive pills in the form of the LNG, it can be taken either as a single dose, 1.5 milligram, or in the form of two doses of 0.75 milligram, 12 hours apart within 72 hours of the unprotected sexual intercourse. Or she can take combined oral contraceptive pills in the form of the USB method, two tablets 
12 hours apart or ulipristal acetate can be taken as a 30 milligram tablet, single tablet within five days, up to the five days of the unprotected suction intercourse can be taken or patient can go for insertion of a property which will not only act as an emergency contraceptive but also will continue to work as for, for the long five years or 10 years, whatever is she using. So emergency contraceptive can be opted. It is again available in the government uh, setup as well as in the over the counter. So it's easy to get that in them. But however, one should again warn that you should not use it as a by habit. Means every now and then you are using it still. If it is like that, one should go for the proper use of the contraceptive, whatever method she wants to use it. So these are the patients. These are the patients who are the ideal candidate for the emergency post uh, postpartum contraceptive uh, use for the emergency postpartum contraception. One more important thing is here, which is written in the third one, is the removed who has removed the intravaginal contraceptive wing for more than three hours during and uh, when it was an active pill or in ring week. If she has removed it for more than three hours, it can be used or she has removed the transdermal contraceptive patch for more than one hour during the patch, patch week or she has missed the depot preparation for more than seven days. So there are some way where either a failure or by mistake she has not used it properly or there is a failure for the condoms and others then emergency contraceptive pills can be used. The very uh, another time tested traditional method is an intrauterine contraceptive device which can be medicated or non medicated. We all know that the, there are plenty of the property devices. Models are available like multi load property 380A, property slim, slimline, so Nova T. So there are a number of them that are present, and depending upon the amount, the surface area, and the duration, the person. Uh, the duration of efficacy is very so it is effective as a long term contraceptive device with a high efficacy rate so very good method this is again uh, a good method because the women they wish to have something fit and forget means once fitted forget about the next few months few years that they have to use any contraceptive. So benefit is again very long acting. Long acting, safe, effective, can be used as emergency contraceptive and then can be continued. Immediate reversal of the fertility, which is required by many of the women. There is no interaction with any kind of the medicine. It is simply there inside the uterine cavity without any hormonal side effect and no effect over the breast milk. The contraindication are well defined. And the side effect, of course, the side effect, the apart from the other bleeding that is most important, dysmenorrhea, infection, perforation, displacement, which is the thing which the people are afraid of even today in the women who have applied it, who are, you are using it, they may listen to others and they may again getting scared of where the property is. It has displaced up into the abdomen or so many things are there or it may get a spell. The thing is that there may be missing threads and the missing thread has got its own way of management, localized it by a ultrasound or by X-ray. Hysteroscopically, you can take it out. If it has really perforated and got displaced in or embedded in, you have to take out either hysteroscopically, laparoscopically and so on. So the thing is that one has to, why we are writing it all, that the patient should come for the follow-up if any of these things is there, should come and we should investigate and we should assure, should treat and do the needful for the patient. So indications for removal are already there, but this is the common contraceptive uh, IUCD. The thing is that that is available all over. The long acting levonorgestrel IUCD is available, though it is not available in the proper government policy in the, in the government sector as a contraceptive method for the, all the women, but it is very well av available in the market and in the private sector, the people are using it. And it is one of the no favorable choice for most of the women. 
it is available in different form, whether it is a 52 milligram containing LNG or a smaller one like 19.5 or 14 milligram. And based upon that, they are about five years efficacy is there for the Mirena, which is commonly being used and an extended period of seven years is there. So a very long acting, it can be used for a very long period. Once inserted, one should forget about it. Fifty. Can I? Yeah, can just I it's over, Didi. Yeah, yeah. So we uh, must have yeah, the contraindications in our hand, which is already well covered by um, Dr. Mariam when she was asking about when it should not. It's very specific when it should not be used. Even it can be used for the postpartum, though it is not. Uh, recommended in the leaflet or the prescription of the LNG IUCD, but WHO is now recommending it. So we can use it in the postpartum and in the post abortal phase as well. And it can be taken up as a uh, switching over from other kind of the hormonal contraceptives. Uh, it can be switched over to the thing. And lastly, we have, may have female esterilization in those patients who are not willing to continue with any kind of contraceptive and they have completed the family life. So we have to have a tailor-made approach rather than a dias, passing a, throwing a dias and select it out. We must think about the counseling is very important and medical eligibility criteria should be taken up. The adolescent low-dose pill is very important. For newly married, all the things can be used, but for the IUCD. Post-delivery, as we have already said, progesterone-only pills and the IUCDs are very important. And for the older women, one word is that if they are using OCP, it has it can be continued up to the 40 to 50 years. If it is more than 50 years, one should stop it. Uh, Non-hormonal should be stopped after one year of uh, using for one year after the cessation of the menstruation. In the hormones, you use till 50 years and then you take it off and switch over to non-hormonal. If you're using LNG, it can be continued even longer till the patient has stopped. Menses. So all these points, they should be informed to the patient. So what is the choice? The contraception is all about the choices and the assess. And assessing timely contraceptive counseling and a full range of the contraceptive methods will enable the women to plan the number of the children they would like to have and the optimum spacing between them. So we should offer all the methods and depending upon what the, will be suiting to the patient, patient can opt for any of them. So thank you so much for the patient listening to me. Of course, there were a lot of disturbance as well, but I am sorry for that. Excellent, Tripti. Very exhaustive. And it was like a seminar in contraception, actually. Thank you so much for making effort so huge. Isn't it, Ashish? I don't know if Ashish is there. Yes, or... Yeah, I'm there. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I like Madam as usual. Uh, it's a, it's a lot of things she covered in the same in a stipulated time, mm -hmm. and um, rightly said by her is a, is a is a choices are more. But uh, when it comes down to the uh, diversity of of her her social background as well as her acceptability, it's varied from. Um, uh, person to person and that's why uh, she nicely narrated about the different options of contraception and uh, uh, looking forward thank you wonderful tripti the one good thing i liked about it dr lakshmi is she used the adjective good for every method she said very good <laughs> <laughs> she said, this is good and that is what i want you to say i want everybody to think all clients to think like that yeah, she is such a good orator. I was keen that she should be able to yes. deliver her talk. Yes. She uh, prepared <laughs> so you. painstakingly. Uh, Tripti, it was too good, and it was a very comprehensive overview of uh, the contraceptive basket which you have given in such a lucid manner. Very nice. Thank very you nice. so much, Tripti. Thank Thanks you. a Thank lot. Thank you so much for giving and, me this opportunity, Shubhadi. Yeah, you, you are most welcome, dear. And uh, can I request Dr. Seema to, uh, yeah, you know share the the more interesting yeah. dynamic part of the quiz and with that with a bang we'll finish today's webinar <laughs> yes dr seema we are waiting for you hello yes we can hear you just unmute doing it yeah i'll i'll share my screen yeah. soon please please sometimes it becomes so difficult to share it also <laughs> Yeah. Yeah.
जाएगा हो जाएगा आपने किया था ना एक बार तो हो अब अच्छे से आएगा अब अच्छे से लोग ओके कनेक्शन स्क्रीन लाइक दिस पिक्चर one is showing a sickle cell anemia sickle cell picture and the other is showing uh, antara so what is the connection between the two not am yet, i audible yet. very much yeah okay the answer yes, is yes. answer nahi aa raha hai tripti you can also <laughs> answer because you no, know no, actually <laughs> actually <laughs> these Jesus. two you will have to make a connection for example if i say that Uh, if I show you a picture of endometrial endometrium which is atrophic, and I show you a picture of progesterone, you can easily say that progesterone causes atrophy of endometrium. So similarly, here these two picture how what are the, how are they connected to each other? So they are writing decreases sickling, prevent sickling crisis. Yes, that's the correct uh, answer. Yes, yes. Yeah, that's the correct answer. So it prevents sickling and improves anemia. So it is a good choice for sickle cell anemia patient yeah. that DIPA can be given to them. So another question is uh, you will have to make this connection. There are two pictures. Uh, one is showing some pathophysiology of ovarian cancer, and the other is showing OCP. So, what is the connection between the two? Waiting, waiting. <laughs> <laughs> I think. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm, not yet. Not yet. Okay. Probably you can. Ha. Huh. OCP is uh, prevent protects against ovarian cancer. uh has uh, that's all that is the only uh, protection uh, for ovarian cancer would have been better if as a post graduate uh, they could have given the percentage percentage dena so chahiye percentage yeah, 40% chahiye. reduce risk um if it is given for more than 3 years even it lasts for 20 years after the use and if they have used it for 10 years then almost 80% reduction and it is it is the chemo profile access for those who have a family history of ovarian cancer 30 to 50% yes correct yeah chemo profile access yeah somebody has written 32 yeah okay okay so this question is one picture is showing bone mineral density where in healthy and osteoporosis is there and and antara the other side is antara so what is the connection between the two dmpa causes osteoporosis <laughs> i will not agree <laughs> decreases no, no, bmp no, that is not the correct answer uh, depletion dr alka kutte said depletion then uh, reduces yeah. bmd decreases bmd all of them feel that it decreases bmd yeah it does decreases bmd but what who has said that a uh, decrease in bone mineral density does not place age or time limits on use of dimpa and it is reversible also yes, yes. so this question is about lng on one side and just a moment seema ji ek minute ha huh? ek minute kisi ne likha hai ki um, sorry i am not able to see the response long term use can decrease bmd so decrease yes, bmd but... and take calcium risk of osteoporosis increases so risk doesn't increase this long term use can decrease bmd here we wanted some uh, input yeah how yeah. long should it be used something like that that question will come what message to give them uh actually w you have already written no time limit yeah, yeah. yes so there is so no need is... to restrict the use in duration i think fpi exactly. uh, president is here uh, they say ma'am i think fpi we will take her opinion use for extended periods of time we'll take it after your questions yes yeah 
Yeah, okay. we can take it later on. Yeah. So this question is about LNG on one side and ovarian endometrioma on the other side. And of course, peritoneal endometriosis, rectovaginal endometriosis. So what is the relation between the two? Yeah, I'm waiting. <laughs> hmm. Hormonal IUCD advantage, yes. Non-contraceptive benefit of LNG. Okay, mm -hmm. then beneficial in endometriosis. LNG reduces pain. Yes. Pain of endometriosis is what yeah, I yeah. LNG yeah. used as treatment modality. Another. Yeah. And the treatment of endometriosis and pain associated with pain. endometriosis. So that was a good answer that it gives pain relief. Yeah. Yeah. And it especially in rectovaginal endometriosis, okay. which was shown here, it is very good for that. Okay. So we have uh, to welcome one minute, Dr. Seema ji. You have to welcome Dr. Bharti Maheshwari. She says, oh. good evening. Sorry being late. So there I durustai and better late than never. That's what I can tell for Bharti. Okay. Very dear friend and a very, very, uh, you know, uh, ardent follower of Safe Abortion. So thank you, Bharti, for joining. Yeah, please allow unmute for the host. Please unmute Dr. Bharti. Okay. Rinku Rawat yes, says decreases dysmenorrhea associated with endometriosis. That is good. Okay. Should I go ahead? Please. So make the connection between these two. One side is shown um, intrauterine device, which is Mirena, and the other side is uh, ring of fire appearance. It's shown on color doctor. What is the connection between the two? Not yet. Decreases vascularity. No, no, Dr. Alkan. <laughs> no, no, no. Bleeding, no, no. Ectopic pregnancy, Niharika has written. But we okay. want Mirena in long term causes ectopic. No, Avanti, no. IUD with pregnancy. Okay. Increases risk of ectopic. Okay. You will have to give them the answer. Okay. <laughs> okay. Actually, with Mirena, the risk is very less because yeah, uh, Dr. Tripti has also said in one of the slides that from 5 to 40 percent reduction and somewhere up to 80 percent ovulation suppression may be uh, there in, with Mirena. But if pregnancy occurs, although the, there is a rare possibility of having a pregnancy, but if at all it occurs, one should always think of ectopic pregnancy with Mirena yes, or so, with any IUCD in C2. So today, Dr. Sima, you have done a huge myth busting for providers that ectopic mm. incidence will decrease with LNG, not increase. No, <laughs> yeah. it will decrease. It yeah. will decrease. Yeah. Next, yes. please. So one side is OCP and the other side is a Turner syndrome. So what is the connection between the two? We are waiting. This is an excellent uh, question, actually. Very, <laughs> very, very good for the question. Thank you. Yeah, we must actually what write low dose. Streak ovaries is written on place. But yeah. what is the correct answer to give? I mean... Uh, you can use OCP in this internal syndrome and primary aminoria as HRT. Correct. They need a yeah, hormone replacement and OCP is very safe for them. <clears throat> okay, next please. Yeah. Then a few MCQs are there. Which statement about seasonal and seasonal contraceptive pill is true? Seasonal contain 84 hormonal pill and 7 pill of ethinyl estradiol to 10 microgram. Seasonal contain 112 hormonal and 7 placebo pill. Seasonic contain 84 hormonal and 7 pills of ethanol estradiol having 10 microgram. And seasonic contain 112 hormonal and 7 pills of. Uh, so waiting. C. Avanti yeah. has written C. Yeah, C is the correct answer. Congratulations, Avanti. That was. Uh, Dr. Is taking C does it. Desogestin 75 microgram daily at 4 p.m. as a contraceptive measure. One day she forgot to take it and re remembered this at 2 a.m. the next day. What would be your advice to her if she contacts you immediately? Take this pill immediately and rest as routine. Take this pill immediately and backup method for two days. Take two pills at 2 a.m. or stop this pill, barrier contraception till medicine yeah. and start a new diet. So B okay. has come as an answer. 
B has come as an answer. Oh, I am afraid it is not. Why? A has also answer? has come. A, A has come. A, A has is come. the correct answer yeah. because 12 hours have not passed and it has a grace period of 12 hours. D so just, uh, just still pill gives a grace period of 12 hours. So it was 4 p.m. and at 2 a.m. she remembered. So it was not 12 hours yet. So she should take uh, immediately and rest as routine. Good. Next, please. Uh, a lady comes to outpatient department for expert advice regarding contraception. She is giving history of laparotomy for ectopic pregnancy three years back. She delivered a live baby six months back with diagnosis of preeclampsia superimposed on chronic hypertension. Which of the following contraceptive would be best for her? Copper T380A, ethanyl estradiol, drosperinol, ethanyl estradiol, levonorgestrel, or ortho evera patch? Uh, one response on D, D, D. People want to give D. One response on A, and then more response on A's. Yeah, please give the answer. A, A is the correct answer because all are hormone containing ethanyl estradiol that should be avoided in a woman who has chronic hypertension and ectopic is not a contraindication for the copper T380A because excellent. it will reduce the incidence of pregnancy. Yes, yes. excellent, excellent. Yeah. Uh, Many have given one, A. Yeah. yeah. Which one of the following is a non contraceptive benefit of DIMPA? Decreased risk of cancer breast, decreased risk of cancer cervix, decreased risk of ectopic pregnancy, or all of the above? D, D, D. Uh, people are giving as D. Some have Should given I? D, C. One has given, I think, A was, uh, yeah, D. What do you say? <laughs> No, C is the correct answer because DIMPA will cause an ovulation and ectopic risk will be less. It has, it will not have any effect on con, con, cancer breast. It is not going to reduce the risk or reduce the risk of cancer cervix, no effect. So all of the above is not the correct answer. In fact, when we are making MCQ, all of the above should not be the correct answer. Yeah, the response Two should more be there. MCQs are there and that will finish. In which of the following condition, progestin-only method may be more appropriate than combination contraceptive, migraine, headache, obesity, hypertension, hyperlipidemia, Not sickness, that, that. Bottle, isn't it? Varun. What is okay, the answer? B. B and D are coming. So D is the correct answer. Here all of the above because uh, where you can't give progesterone, you can give, uh, uh, sorry, estrogen, you can give progesterone only contraceptive. Last yeah. question is which of the following method cannot be used as an emergency contraception? Copper T380A, combined oral contraceptive, mefepristone or mesoprostol? D is coming in. Yeah, that is the correct answer. So, here, Good. like the last slide is thank you everyone for participating in this quiz. Everyone yeah. was really wonderful. And accept an apology from my side that there are no prizes, but there is oh. a huge appreciation. <laughs> and, that is the best prize. Yeah. Yes, that is the best prize. <laughs> and uh, thank you, Dr. Seema, for this wonderful effort. And you really brought us all together. Thank you so much. Thank yes, you. And Shobha, I, I really want to clap for Dr. Seema. This, this was wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. That is the prize what I got for conducting <laughs> the quiz. <laughs> yeah. Great. Just one, yeah. Just one comment on the duration for which DMPA can be given. Uh, from any of the experts, uh, then yeah. We'll up, yeah. So thank you, Chova. If I can answer that, so uh, the uh, DMP according to the latest guidelines, in, they are not very new. Also, can be given four weeks late and two weeks earlier. That's about DMP. A couple of more small points I just want to make uh, is that regarding uh, 
POP, it is recommended that it is better given to breastfeeding women and particularly up to six months of breastfeeding. If POP is taken, it really uh, enhances the efficacy and that is a recommendation. After six months, if women still want to continue with the pills, she can switch over to another method. Uh, one point about ECP, we are all actually very, very jittery if a woman demands ECP is too often. Uh, it is true that a regular contraceptive should be adopted and repeated use. But, but technically, academically speaking, the various studies have shown there is no harm if ECP is taken more than once or twice. In fact, the number has yet not been defined, but it is not harmful. We should of course, advice for a regular method who keeps on needing it, but we should not deny not any deny. woman if she demands it for more than once or any number of times. In fact, there are some people who are still doing studies uh, that can it be used as a, you know, on demand a third option for women who have infrequent coitus. On demand. And in on demand, and particularly for, for mm. the, the extreme age, those sporadic uses uh, like perimenopausal women, and the, so we should not deny this, uh, you know, option yeah. to the woman. Yeah, just these uh, couple of points. And for IUCD, I just want to say, uh, for since many many years, in fact, ever since this uh, IUCD three eighty eight came two thousand two mm -hmm. onwards, we don't call it copper T anymore. The earlier version, 200B, till that time this word was used, copper T, we say IUCD 380A, at least in the public system, that is what we call it yeah. now. Yeah. Last point, uh, if it would be good, you know, if we all know, I mean, people all who are practicing, what is, no, it's good to know all the methods across the globe, which are there in use, but it is good also to know what is available in India, what is not. For example, patches. Patches came in India for a few years and then they were withdrawn. So they're not available. Right? So we should know that how yeah. practically... Availability is how important. Correct. 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 Right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for so that. Much. Wow, Sunita ji. Thank you. Desai ma'am, I think you wanted to give an input on for how long DMPA can be used because always people feel that uh, it cannot be used for years together. Generally three years would three be years, my yeah. tip. Correct. So uh, studies are there which support the use of DMPA for long periods of time and uh, the loss of bone mineral density is reversed even after several years of use. So if a woman is really very keen to continue that particular method because it is suiting her, I think she should not be discouraged because of this fear about loss of BMD. That is um, what I wanted to say. And um, uh, yes, um, today has been a very informative uh, session. Dr. Lakshmi, if you could uh, give any inputs, we are ready to close. Shubha, it was a wonderful session today with inputs Thank from you. our experts. Dr. Ratnamala, Dr. Singhal, Dr. Bulbul Sood was here and your talk and uh, Dr. Dipti who gave comprehensive overview and icing on the cake was the quiz. Yes, so I'm sure each and every delegate who attended today must have been benefited by your uh, topic which you gave them that is implant as I already said we really wish more and more women to use implants and the basket which Tripti has shared with all the delegates who attended. So it has benefited each one of you and Shobha, it was thank you well chosen topic and well chosen speakers along with such an eminent experts who are so passionate about this subject and uh, along with Dr. Arfi Sonawala sir who is still logged in, who addressed the audience here on he also shared his passion about the family planning work because my association with FPI Ratnamala doctor is 1991 when I did my lab TL course from Mumbai FPI. Mumbai, 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 Mumbai. <laughs> yeah, no, Fort branch. That time okay. the office was in Fort and I was in Mumbai 1991 I am talking. <laughs> but I am so happy that sir is still uh, here. That sir, you want to say my anything? God, my God. <laughs> Sir, he is so passionate about this work. Sir, any comments from your side? Yeah. 
I'm just waiting for the day when we don't have to go after the patients and explain to them it is for your own health. The day when they come to the clinic understanding that what we are doing is for their own health. Because each and every pregnancy is a tremendous stress on the woman's body. Yes. And the day that they themselves understand and they come forward will be the day our purpose will be served. And I'm so glad to see so many speakers, so many women, and the knowledge that each one has shown is <laughs> tremendous. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for the... Thank you, day. sir. Thank, Thank you, sir. sir. Thank you, sir. That's a wonderful vision. Yes. <laughs> Let's hope that they will come. It will come. It will come. It will sir, come. sir has inspired so, so many, many obstetricians and has healed so many patients across the world. So I think, sir, your legacy, we hope that we will continue in a small part. And we are so blessed to have your presence today. And Dr. Lakshmi, I'm really grateful to you that I'm conducting this session. And uh, so many people have given valuable contribution today. Yes, yes. So, fantastic session. Fantastic. So thank you very much to the ICOG team as well. Nilima, uh, your team is really good. Poor thing, she said she's on leave, but still she joined for some time. <laughs> I'm so grateful to you, Nilima. Thank you, Bharti, if you are around still for joining at the last minute. Thank you, Ashish, for being experts. Thank you, uh, Ratamara, ma'am. Thank, thank you, Dr. Thank you. thank you, madam. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And thank you, Seema ji. Thanks. And thank Tripti, you. Thank you. Thank and you, Tripti, you. loads of love to you, Tripti. You really are the wonderful. I, I still remember her as my one year junior at uh, MD and I really cherish my friendship with Ripti Nagariya. Thank you so much for being there. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Uh, Ali, you can stop the recording. Yeah. Yeah. So, thank thanks you. to the delegates also. Very, yes. <laughs> I'm so sorry I did not mention. <laughs> so, enjoy your evening. Yeah.